This is a total sim video on the free flight recipe. The free flight recipe is part of the TS Aero app and it allows users to run simulations as if uh, uh, for most cases like an aircraft or any vehicle that's flying through the air without a ground plane involved. So it's quite similar to the vertical takeoff and landing recipe uh, except the result outputs are different. Um, and that it uses coefficient forces instead of raw forces. And it uh, still uses propellers, but it also includes uh, mass flow radiators and uh, hinge elements, and it doesn't have a ground plane in the simulation. So when you're uh, wanting to use the uh, simulation recipe, you'll need to export your geometry into STL files uh, which are just surface files and you can output it as meter scale or uh, millimeter feet inches uh, we prefer me meter though. Uh, the aircraft or vehicle will have to be facing the negative x direction and the top uh, direction will be the plus c and so gravity will be pointing in the negative z direction and you won't need to export the propeller surfaces of your geometry. So if you have uh, some disks or uh, actual propeller geometry that you have in your uh, CAD model, you won't actually have to export those files. Uh, the app will automatically be generating uh, propeller disks within the simulation itself. And uh, as of May 2018 of this video, we don't have CAD or Onshape imports just yet but we'll probably have those uh, sometime in the near future. And you may also want to have uh, some propeller performance curves uh, ready on hand if you're wanting to model the propeller performance uh, on your vehicle. But we are able to give you some example propeller data that you can use as well, uh, though your results won't make as much sense if you're using data we generate for you since it may not be relevant to exactly how your propellers are performing. So if we go to the uh, geometry that I currently have uh, for an example, I have this uh, HLP, uh, HLP W3 geometry that uh, came from a NASA workshop that we used to correlate some of our data with. And so what you can do is you'll probably want to split up your geometry into several components. Uh, in my case, I have uh, the body for the fuselage. Uh, I have some uh, elements of the wing, so the flat and the no NP, and uh, the slat no NP. And this main, uh, the main wing is going to be part of the uh, main no NP. And so I'll export these all four as four different STL files, which I've already done so here. And then if I go back to the application, uh, when you uh, are wanting to start your project, uh, you'll see no runs yet. Um, you'll want to go into the geometries page and you can do upload parts. Select the four parts you're wanting to upload. And then go ahead and press open. And then you'll see the four files that you're wanting to import. And you can select what type of geometry they are. You can also select these later, but uh, for convenience you can select them from here. So you can do a wing element, fuselage, wing element, wing element. And this main actually should be the uh, main wing right here. And then uh, I'll say that it's a meter scale and I'll go ahead and submit. Now I've already actually submitted these geometries so we don't have to wait. Uh, if we uh, go into part details, uh, we can go into body, it's a fuselage, uh, the main wing. I've already input the cord length, the reference span, and the reference area for the uh, main wing as well. And then we have the two wing element geometries. So the cord length is uh, primarily used for the, uh, the pitch moment uh, coefficient calculation as well as for other things. The uh, reference span would be used for the, uh, the yaw moment and the roll moment. And the reference area is used for the lift uh, coefficient and the drag coefficient of the uh, aircraft or vehicle. And you don't really need to have any other inputs for the other geometries besides saying what type they are. Uh, some of the other uh, 
geometry types, uh, as an example, you can select something like uh, if you uploaded uh, some radiator geometry, you can specify the, the direction that the uh, radiator is facing um, and the direction the air is uh, impacting it, as well as uh, some of the porosity coefficients that will kind of define how slowly the fluid flows going through the radiator. Um, so this can be useful for if you're modeling like your engine cooling, uh, if, you're, if your vehicle has an engine intake and exhaust that you're wanting to model. Um, you also can do a, a hinge element and the hinge element's basically um, a flap or a wing that uh, can rotate uh, around a rotational axis and so you're setting the two points of the rotational axis here and during if you uh, define this then on the simulate when you're actually running the simulation you'll be able to say I want a zero degree angle or a five degree angle or a ten degree angle on this hinge element geometry specifically and it'll automatically rotate it for you uh, when it's running the simulation and it'll also automatically report the uh, the moment forces on this uh, hinge element that uh, is based around these rotational axis. Otherwise, uh, the moments are just based around the uh, reference moment center of the aircraft, which uh, I'll show you shortly. So anyways, so I've, uh, the other files that I was uploading just pulled up here. So I get a warning because my uh, one of the files I just uploaded still needs uh, the core length and reference span and reference area, um, which I've already defined here. So I can just delete these files that I... Uh, had just uh, uh, uploaded for this demo video. All right, so I still have the four files I created earlier. Uh, assemblies, um, you usually don't have to worry about uh, for free flight recipe, um, but they can be useful if you are wanting to um, just group up the forces on several different parts. So if I had 10 different parts and, I, and they were all composing the tail or the wing, or maybe the landing gear. I could uh, group them up in this group assembly and uh, I will get some forces at the end that are uh, associated with this test assembly. Um, and let's see. So if I had like several parts here that I wanted to attach to this assembly, I could go like this and attach parts. And now I have these two parts associated with this assembly. But anyways, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so for free flight you can uh, create a parametric suite and what that means is that you can define a series of runs let's call it series 01 or let's call it run 01 maybe uh, we'll specify the the altitude which helps us define the viscosity density pressure and temperature if we need to we can also assign a temperature offset and that will update the uh, density and viscosity but I don't need to worry about that. Uh, some of the fields are uh, blanked out and that's because I'm going to be setting them later because they're param parametrizable. Uh, I'll set the reference moment center to zero, but you know, the, usually the reference moment center is going to be the center of your aircraft that you want your moment forces based off of. I'll select the four geometries that I want to be part of the simulation and then I'll click save. And so now we get this parametric sweep section. And what it's asking me to do is fill out this table with the, uh, uh, some, some rows of data that I want to test on. So let's say I want to do like four runs and I just want it to be an angle of attack sweep. So I'll have a zero yaw, uh, speed of 40 meters per second. And then I'll copy this three times. Actually, we'll just do three runs. We'll make this an angle attack of 10 and an angle attack of 20. Right, so then I click save again. And then what's going to do is it's going to make three runs for me 
Uh, the three runs are going to have three different uh, alpha or angle of attacks and degrees. And uh, then it's going to let me run these uh, three runs uh, all at once. If I click Submit All. And what it's going to do is it's going to queue up these three simulations. And they're uh, going to be run one after the other. They're going to reuse the same mesh, but they're going to uh, run, run the simulation at a different angle of attack. And so what that lets us do is kind of uh, see, it can help us find the stall angle for one, if we're uh, doing an angle of attack. Or we can uh, do something like uh, do a yaw sweep and get an average drag on the vehicle by having a, a sweep of wind yaws. So. Anyways, so these three will then be queued up. They'll show up as yellow here. Uh, they'll be blinking because they're currently queued. If I do a reload job state, uh, it would probably tell me that uh, these two are now uh, waiting or held and that this one is currently queued. So when this one finishes, these next two will run. And then at the very end, then we'll see the, uh, all, the, uh, all the data for these three runs combined together into a table. Uh, likewise, I can also just do a, a single run if I go on a new run, uh, and it's just like the uh, this parametric sweep table, except I can just say something like run one dot four something, uh, same same values, do an angle attack of four, as you know, of zero, forty, zero zero zero, select the four parts I want to run, click save. Uh, likewise, you can uh, if you can do this in the parametric sweep or in here, you can uh, view the 3D uh, of the uh, geometry as well. My internet might be a little slow, so this might take a while to load. So we'll kind of wait for that to finish first, and then we'll uh, maybe visit it later. Uh, anyways, though, we can uh, click submit, and now we've got this run submitted as well. All right. See if this is still loading. Starting to load in. Anyways, uh, this 3D view though, uh, before you run a simulation, you can use this to uh, kind of confirm that all your geometry is there. Uh, we use it for other things as well. So, like if you uh, are creating propellers or creating a propeller assembly, we'll show the propellers within the uh, 3D view as well. Uh, as well as for other utility things like the hinge elements will show the rotational axis. Basically, if you're defining points or simple geometries uh, in your geometry or simulation setup, we can usually render it in the 3D view and that'll help you confirm that the inputs you have make sense overall. And that'll save you some time uh, so that you can confirm things before you actually click submit. So. So now that we have these four jobs running, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, come back to some completed results elsewhere and we'll show you that as well. Right, so here we have a project of the same HLPW3 to geometry that we were uh, running earlier. Uh, in this case, we've got some runs that uh, haven't been submitted yet, some that failed and some that completed. Uh, the ones that completed will show up under this uh, table data here that we can look at. If we want to like compare uh, a baseline versus other runs that have the same pitch, yaw, and uh, velocity, uh, we can click a baseline on the table and it will show the, uh, the difference in the drag, lift, and the uh, uh, moments as well. Uh, we can look at the summary mass flows, if there was any uh, runs that had radiators in them. We could, likewise with the uh, individual force groups. Uh, so if we had like an assembly or if we wanted to look at all the wing element forces versus the, uh, the fuselage forces. Uh, we'll have some plots as well. So um, this is subject to change, but we could do something like uh, here and uh, be able to like view the uh, uh, plots of the drag versus uh, pitch. Um, if we go into an individual run, we can view the images. We can view the uh, convergence curves. Uh, to see how well the forces converged for drag or lift. Uh, we can look at drag or lift groups for the individual run. We can look at images, 
and we can look at movies as well. You can step to the movies like so. And so some important tips to remember when using the free flight recipe. The sweeps page uh, will have some different token prices if there are subsequent runs one after the other. And so what that means basically is that if uh, you're rerunning the simulation and it has the same geometry but different, sim uh, different simulation conditions, so like a different angle of attack or a different yaw uh, or a different velocity, then you'll have a different token cost that should be cheaper than if you were just running uh, a one simulation per unique geometry configuration. And that's so we can encourage you to perform those alpha sweeps or to perform those yaw sweeps, uh, which is a better uh, habit to do. So you can kind of average between runs to get a final uh, drag and lift value for several simulations at once. Uh, if you uh, are having a main wing, you're going to make sure you at least have one so that we can use the reference cord and the reference span of that main wing component to run the simulation because we use that to calculate the coefficient values. The hinge elements are available if you want to have any parts that you want to upload separately and be able to rotate and get individual moment forces about the uh, rotational axis. When you're uh, exporting your part surfaces, you'll want to make sure and double check that the surfaces uh, all combined will result in an enclosed surface and that means it's airtight and won't have any leaks in it because if there's leaks in it we'll have the mesh uh, be much larger and that will impact the solver performance. If you're wanting to measure the mass flow through the engine intake or the exhaust or model the uh, radiators of the uh, engine uh, we do have a radiator type that you can use when you're uploading your geometry components. And finally, we have a, a docs page that you can look at. Uh, so there's some uh, more information on the fields and what, the, uh, what they're involved with. Uh, for pitch and yaw, they kind of follow the right-hand rule. So a positive yaw would be the same as if you were rotating the, uh, the vehicle uh, around the uh, z-axis with your right hand and likewise with pitch uh, positive pitch would be if you were rotating the vehicle about the y-axis with your right hand so that's a helpful way to remember it likewise the span here is set cord length and the cumulative wing area is what we use for calculating the coefficients and uh, yeah, and then some more information on uh, the free flight recipe uh, can be found here as well under the uh, run setup uh, page. So that pretty much covers it. Um, we'll uh, have uh, be able to answer any questions you have if you email app support at totalsim.us. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.